it is the week of Thanksgiving, and usually we jump right from Thanksgiving into Christmas. And it feels more like a sprint from Thanksgiving to the day that we celebrate Jesus' birth. But actually, the church has given us a gift. It's a season called Advent. And Advent means to come. And so it is during these next four weeks that we are intentional about the coming of Jesus. We celebrate the past when he came 2,000 years ago and uh, give thanks for the birth uh, of Jesus. But we also anticipate his coming again, his second coming when he will make a new heaven and a new earth. But Advent is also about the present, of him coming to be with us today, coming into our hearts, coming into our families, coming into our communities, coming into our world. And so this Advent season, we want to do something a little different. It's going to be a different um, uh, next four weeks anyway. We're going to be spending more time at home. Um, we're going to be with family in a different way, or maybe we're not with family um, in the ways that we have traditionally done so. So we want to take this time to uh, be intentional in our preparation and to be in our homes and to share with one another uh, the joy and the hope and the love um, and the peace that we will experience uh, in these next few weeks. So let's begin this time with a liturgy to mark the beginning of the, Christi of the Christmas season. And so I invite you to join uh, with me and Brenda Branson, who will be reading this uh, liturgy. A liturgy to mark the start of the Christmas season from the book, Every Moment Holy, by Douglas M. McKelvey. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Luke 2, 10 through 12. As we prepare our house for the coming Christmas season, we would also prepare our hearts for the returning Christ. You came once for your people, O oh Lord, and you will come for us again. Though there was no room at the end to receive you upon your first arrival, we would prepare you room here in our hearts and here in our home, Lord Christ. As we decorate and celebrate, we do so to mark the memory of your redemptive movement into our broken world, O oh God. Our glittering ornaments and Christmas trees, our festive carols, our sumptuous feasts, by these small tokens, we affirm that something amazing has happened in time and space that God on a particular night in a particular place so many years ago was born to us an infant king, our prince of peace. Our wreaths and ribbons and colored lights, our giving of gifts, our parties with friends, these have never been ends in themselves. They are but small ways in which we repeat that sounding joy first proclaimed by angels in the skies near Bethlehem. In view of such great tidings of love announced to us and to all people, how can we not be moved to praise and celebration 
in this Christmas season. As we decorate our tree and as we feast and laugh and sing together, we are rehearsing our coming joy. We are making ready to receive the one who has already, with open arms, received us. We would prepare you room here in our hearts and here in our home, Lord Christ. Now we celebrate your first coming, Emmanuel, even as we long for your return. O Prince of Peace, our elder brother, return soon. We miss you so. Amen. So we begin this Advent season, um, this time of preparing and coming. And I want to read um, this scripture from Isaiah. Um, this is a familiar scripture, uh, chapter 9. We often read it this time of year, but let's hear it anew this day. It says Isaiah 9, beginning with verse 2. The people who walked in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in the land of the deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge a nation of the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms blood stained by war will all be burned and they will be fuel for the fire for a child is born unto us and a son is given to us and the government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father and the prince of peace it seems in these days uh, that there's a lot of darkness. And in this Advent season, we light candles as a reminder that Jesus is the light of the world, that he comes to light our darkness. And so you see um, many churches and many people in their home, they do uh, what's called an Advent wreath where they light a candle each week. We usually begin the worship services by lighting a candle and just wanted to take a moment to, for us to really appreciate what this ritual means for us. And so there's uh, a candle in the four uh, weeks leading up to Christmas. And so those are the four weeks. Each candle represents something. And so the first candle is hope. And we remember that Jesus is the hope of the world. The next candle is peace, that he is our prince of peace. The, the third candle, which is the pink candle, and I'll explain that in just a moment, is actually the candle of joy. And then the last is um, the candle of love, that Jesus came to show us great love. On Christmas Eve, we light the white candle, which is the Christ candle, uh, representing his birth. Many churches keep the Christ candle lit until Easter, and so they continue uh, the tradition of the Christ candle during that season. The purple represents royalty, only the um, elite, um, those in, uh, who are wealthy, would be able to afford the rich dyes that purple brought, and so um, when uh, a king or a queen would have on purple robes. It represents that royalty. We light purple candles because we know that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We also, um, it is a symbol of repentance 
And so we often don't think about repentance in Advent, but for Jesus to come into our hearts, we must repent. We must turn away from our selfish ways and allow him to have more room in our heart. In the midst of any season of repentance, any season of sorrow, there's always joy, which is the third candle, the third Sunday of Advent, is actually um, in pink because it represents the joy that Jesus brings in the midst. This is not a necessarily a church tradition, but I appreciate lighting um, the third candle um, in, in Advent because usually it falls around the week of the longest night of the year. And so that um, week where we remember that longest night, just the sorrow that it brings at times, um, there is joy in the midst of that. There is great joy. So this Advent season, let us pause. Um, so maybe your uh, tradition that, uh, or the practice that you undertake this Advent season in these next four weeks is simply to light a candle. It doesn't have to be purple. It doesn't have to be pink. Just any candle. Just light it. Pause for just a moment. Take a deep breath and invite Jesus into your heart. Say, come, Lord Jesus, into my family. Come, Lord Jesus, into our community. Come, Lord Jesus, into our world, that you bring light into this darkened place. Okay.